So in the super dense coding protocol, we made use of a special quantum state, uh, the Bell state. And I said in an earlier video that the Bell state was an example of a special type of quantum state, a so-called entangled uh, quantum state, but didn't explain exactly what that meant. In this video, I'm going to explain exactly what uh, entanglement is, what it means for a state uh, to be entangled, uh, and start to explain why uh, entangled states are important uh, in quantum mechanics and in quantum computing. Uh, I want you to begin by imagining uh, the memory state of a conventional uh, classical computer. So we might have a bunch of bits, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 0, uh, etc. And I want to point out a fact that's, well, it's really mind-bogglingly obvious. I'm, I'm just pointing out, uh, you know, th something everybody knows very well, which is that each bit uh, in this computer has its own uh, definite value, zero or one or, or zero here and so on. Um, and that this is generally true uh, whenever we describe uh, objects using the laws of quantum physics, uh, excuse me, classical physics. So if I describe uh, you know, uh, everyday object like a tennis ball or maybe a large object like, uh, you know, a planet uh, using the laws of classical physics, what classical physics tells me to do is to specify uh, the state of each constituent part, um, you know, according to the rules of classical physics, typically uh, a position and a uh, velocity and maybe some other facts like uh, uh, the mass, uh, the charge, uh, and so on. So we get an exact description uh, for each object. And while this is uh, sort of very obvious and familiar, it's actually not true in the case of quantum mechanics. It turns out, uh, for example, in the case of a quantum computer, that it's not always possible uh, to describe uh, the state uh, of each individual uh, qubit, that it doesn't have a definite state uh, on its own. And I'm going to illustrate that with the example uh, of uh, the Bell uh, state. So uh, I want you to consider uh, the Bell state. Uh, it is, of course, uh, this state, which should be becoming quite familiar by now, 0, 0, plus 1, 1, all over uh, root 2. And it turns out that there's no way we can prepare a state of the first qubit and the second qubit uh, which gives this as the overall state. So it's not possible to write this uh, in terms of a state alpha naught plus beta one of the first qubit together with a state, uh, let's call it gamma zero plus delta one of uh, the second qubit. Now, I actually haven't told you uh, the mathematical rules governing uh, how we should put states of multiple qubits together, like I've uh, done uh, here. But the rules are pretty much exactly what you'd uh, I expect. Uh, everything, you know, multiplication distributes uh, nicely and, and, and so on. And so in particular, we can uh, expand uh, this state out as, oh, I should say, by the way, I'm going to prove that, that it's not possible to do this. So we, we need to manipulate this state a little bit to see that it's not possible for it to be equal to uh, the Bell state. So we expand this state out as, well, the amplitude for naught naught is going to be alpha times gamma. The amplitude uh, for the naught one state is going to be alpha delta naught one. The amplitude for the one naught state is beta gamma. And the final amplitude for one one is beta uh, delta. And uh, it's now pretty straightforward uh, to see that this uh, uh, state can't possibly be equal to the Bell state. And the way we do it, we observe uh, that, for example, this amplitude, alpha delta, must be equal uh, to zero. That's the only way this could possibly be equal uh, to the Bell state. You know, if we wanted that to be true, we would need alpha delta to be equal to zero which implies that either alpha is equal to zero or delta is equal to zero or both of them are equal to zero. But if alpha is equal uh, to zero, then this first amplitude necessarily vanishes for the zero zero state. And so it's not equal to the, uh, the uh, Bell state. And if delta is equal to zero, uh, then the final amplitude uh, beta delta for one one uh, vanishes 
and therefore it's not equal uh, to the bill state. And so, uh, you know, if, if this is our starting state, uh, it cannot possibly uh, be equal uh, to uh, the bell state. Okay, so we're going to call states uh, with this property um, that they can't be decomposed into parts uh, entangled uh, uh, quantum uh, states. Any state with, with this property uh, will be called entangled or, or an example of entanglement. Um, and so the, the bell state is just one of, as we'll see, uh, many. And these entangled quantum states really are different uh, than classical states. And it turns out that they're essential uh, in the workings of quantum uh, computers. In particular, it's possible uh, to prove, for example, that any quantum computation which never generates uh, entangled quantum states can be efficiently simulated on a conventional classical computer. And to put this another way, uh, what this result uh, means is that for a quantum algorithm uh, to be much faster than a corresponding uh, classical algorithm, it necessarily uh, must make use of entangled quantum states at some uh, point along the way. So what exactly is it that makes entangled quantum states uh, so useful uh, for quantum uh, computation? And unfortunately, today, nobody can give a really precise and really comprehensive answer to this question. Various partial results are known, but we don't have a, a really comprehensive uh, understanding. Uh, but there is an interesting uh, intuitive uh, answer uh, that it's possible to give to the question. And in particular, um, you know, let's take a look and imagine we have a general um, state of n qubits which can be expanded in terms of, here's the amplitude uh, for the all zero state, uh, the amplitude for the state which just has a single one in it at the end, uh, and so on. So we get a whole bunch of terms. And in particular, you know, there's two to the n different uh, possible computational basis states. So there are two to the n uh, 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 amplitudes um, in this uh, quantum uh, states, um, and that's far, far more than the n numbers, the n bits, uh, which is required to describe the state of an n qubit, uh, an n bit uh, classical uh, computer. Uh, you know, there's, there's an enormous difference in, in complexity in, in the description. Um, incidentally, by the way, from uh, this difference in uh, complexity, um, it's kind of an interesting extra point about entanglement, which is if each qubit had its own definite state, which you could describe with two amplitudes, then you'd be able to describe the whole n qubit state using uh, uh, two n uh, 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 separate amplitudes or independent uh, degrees of freedom. Uh, and so you see that, in fact, the number of quantum states which can be described in that way is just a tiny, tiny, tiny fraction um, of the, the total space of quantum states. We get, you know, this far more uh, independent degrees uh, of uh, freedom. Um, so, but coming back to the, the main point that I want to make, um, we see that an n qubit quantum computer, um, yeah, because it, it has these two to the n amplitudes uh, to describe it, it can contain a great deal of, of hidden information, exponentially more uh, than on an n-bit classical computer. Now, I say hidden because of this point that I've made uh, uh, repeatedly earlier. Um, we don't actually have direct access. We can't observe uh, these amplitudes uh, directly. Uh, but we can, of course, make use uh, of quantum gates uh, to rapidly manipulate that exponential amount of hidden information. And so it can be reflected in the final measurement results uh, output uh, from our uh, quantum computation, and it, it's by somehow it's by doing this uh, uh, that uh, quantum computers uh, get their uh, information processing uh, power, and we'll see some explicit examples uh, later in the course. Okay, that uh, concludes uh, that video. Um, in the next video, we're going to come back and we're going to look at another element of the superdense coding. Uh, protocol, in particular the bit at the end uh, where the person uh, receiving the information uh, gets the um, uh, 
uh, basically has to distinguish between four different quantum states. And so in the next video, we are going to look at some general facts about when it's possible uh, to distinguish quantum states from one another.